Hello, hello, hello. This is Roberto Lorenzo Ferguson. Yes, Robert Ferguson. I am your nutritionist. I'm a guy who shares because I care. And today we are going to talk about, or at least in this video, intermittent fasting. I've talked about it many times over the past. I've shared studies. There's data that supports everything that I'm sharing. And keep in mind that I'm coming from a place where we have an evidence base, clinically proven methodology. And when you have that, that means that what we do works. So if a person doesn't want to eat, right, and you want to do intermittent fasting, okay, and you say that it works, you may have clients and it works maybe personally, you feel that it works. Well, our program works too. And we've worked with thousands of people with third parties to prove that eating breakfast, not avoiding food, but eating three meals a day, snacking, not only helps people lose weight, eating real food, you guys. That's the part that, I, I mean, I battle with this on a day-to-day -day basis, and for 20-something years, I continue to battle with this because the people that I'm saying that I battle with, they don't know what they don't know. They just don't know what we do. Now, once you experience the Diet Free Life methodology and you succeed, it's like getting an iPhone or a, you know, an Android and seeing all these cool things that it can do. If we were back in 1986, you'd be like, wow, that's amazing. And once you see it, you can't unsee that. The only people that I am I feel like I'm constantly battling with are just people who they're just in the dark. They don't know until they know. And many of you who catch the lives or the replays, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know the power because you've lived it. But there's a lot of people that when it comes to losing weight, all they know is what they know. That's why people are so, they become prey for things like keto and carnivore and intermittent fasting, ozempic, because they don't know any better. So it's their ignorance that puts them in a position where those things have a, a really high level of allure. They're, they're interesting. They, they, they're compelling because people want to be successful. Unfortunately, if I don't meet them and show them what we do, then they just, they fall prey. They fall prey. It's not their fault. I mean, like they say, ignorance is bliss. Now, for years, I have talked about how intermittent fasting is not something I would recommend. Now, stay with me on this. Like, for those of you who want to better understand intermittent fasting, should you do it? Should you not? In the next 15 minutes, you will have clarity. Because here's the setup. I'm saying no to intermittent fasting because I have an evidence-based, clinically proven methodology. I have clients in all ethnicities all around the world who we've helped lose weight without doing intermittent fasting in all of these crazy restrictive diets. So I know that, right? And again, people who don't know that, they're just going to look at the fads and, and what's trending. And when they look at what's trending, they're also looking for references. And so you have like Dr. Pita Atia, who I actually, I like him. I, I like the way he communicates. I like, I can tell he's very passionate. Like I really pick up positive vibes. But I also have noticed that he will jump on something and then things change, and he's on to something else. But whatever he's on, he's very convincing. And you see that with quite a few other people. Like, I really like Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I like her because of the work she does with uh, Bill Harris in the areas of omega-3s, and uh, she's, she's very upfront, very transparent. But I've seen her shift. And a lot of their shifts is not just based on on waking up one day and wanting to, something to be different, their shifts are based on data changes and 
and, and then they look at it differently and then they like make a change right so they make a change so so here we are where i haven't changed none at all when it comes to intermittent fasting because i have an evidence based clinically proven program that has helped thousands of people they don't have that so they're jumping from what's hot and what's talked about science to science so if i'm on a panel with them there's not even a debate there's no competition because they have not done what i have done i hope you guys are getting getting what i'm saying so i know what i have done that they don't they have not done i know what they are not aware of they are only aware of what their personal experience have been and what they have seen in the literature. They are not familiar with the diet for life methodology because if they were, they would stop jumping around the same as the average person and they would be 100% on board with what we do. Guaranteed. Like if you're listening to me and you're hearing me for the first time and you don't quite get what I'm saying, that's the reason why you want to get to know me and some of our coaches and get what I'm saying. Because we have something and we've helped thousands, if not millions of people. We're just not household name at the moment. But you can't deny what we've done from a clinical standpoint. So I'm going to I have two videos I want to play. I want to do a little ride along with you. And there's a guy I put the full link there. Thomas. I like Thomas. He's he seems very transparent. I've watched him eat crow the same as I've eaten crow because I've made mistakes over the years. And I love it when someone who is an influencer and someone who's up front, like the Dr. Pita Atia, like, you know, Rhonda, uh, Dave Session. Like, I've watched a lot of these experts totally change. Now, the cool part is that they've changed and they're in alignment with what I've been saying for years. But at one point, when I was the one saying intermittent fasting is not a good thing, they were saying it was. And a lot of people jumped on intermittent fasting because they were just looking for that lie. And we don't want a lie. We want the truth. So let's watch this video together. And, and we're going to get a better understanding of why I'm not a big fan of intermittent fasting. And why all the experts who were, a lot of the experts who were promoting intermittent fasting are no longer promoting intermittent fasting. And many people don't know that they're no, no longer promoting it. They're still walking around thinking it's the thing to do. And it's not. Take a look. Rhonda Patrick. I'm going to cut to a clip where she talks about no longer skipping breakfast and why she's no longer doing that. She's no longer fasting. So, Dr. Patrick, take it away. Probably one of the biggest things I've changed my mind on over the past few, few years is um, my stance on meal skipping, skipping a meal. And um, somehow this has become synonymous with intermittent fasting. Like people, when they think about intermittent fasting, they think about skipping meal. And it's not, that's not intermittent fasting, so to speak, right? I mean, intermittent fasting is really, there's different types of it. And it has to do with like having a period of time without having food intake. Um, but the, when I say specifically meal skipping, I think mostly it's skipping breakfast. And I think that's actually what a lot of people do end up doing when they are quote unquote, trying to practice intermittent fasting. So that's kind of interesting. She really was a big fan of fasting before. In fact, she even talked about it, I think on Rogan and stuff. But now let's talk about Dr. Peter Atia because he's really pivoted on things. So much so that he's kind of pissed some people off, but I really admire his ability to change with science. And in this particular case, he talks about how he changed his views on prolonged sort of regular fasting. So Dr. Peter, it's you. Okay, before we get there again, see, I love this video because we're keeping it real, you guys. We're keeping it very clear. We're keeping it real. You can change your mind, but here's the difference. When you're clinically proven, which is what the Die Free Life methodology is. I didn't say evidence-based. We are evidence-based. Now, a lot of people can be evidence-based. Rhonda was evidence-based, but she doesn't approach nutrition from a place of clinically proven. We are clinically proven. Controlled trials, proven, verified, right? Validated, and is reproducible every week because of our coaches are teaching the same methodology. Hell, hear me, please. Like if you're a certified coach with us, you're teaching the methodology. That's what makes us extremely unique. 
No one else at this moment in time on the planet is doing what we are universally doing. So we don't have to guess and jump around. We have a proven, clinically proven methodology. So we're not changing mind. Now, if you go back to 2005, when I went national with an infomercial, I said, okay, grapeseed oil is something that I would endorse. I was okay with grapeseed oil. That was, as I share this, 19 years ago. I today would never recommend grapeseed oil because I had misinformation. And fortunately, I'm the kind of person that is constantly challenging myself. And I was able to unveil and realize that what I was sharing about grapeseed oil is not something that I would recommend. So like them, they promoted the intermittent fasting, but now they have the balls, they have the, 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 the humility to say, hey, I'm not really going in that direction. I don't really recommend that. And they have millions of people that follow them. So that being said, let's keep it moving. And uh, let's, uh, this is Peter Atia. Uh, again, I, I really like, I like him and Rhonda a lot. They're, 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 I like their work. I like their approach. And I appreciate the fact that they would be open and honest about how they have changed their mind when it comes to intermittent fasting. It's not something they would recommend you to do. Okay, so let's keep it moving. First one that I would say I've changed my mind on is the importance of regular fasting. Um, so I used to really do a lot of regular fasting, um, probably considered excessive by, by some. Um, so probably did a seven day, seven to 10 day water only fast once a quarter and a three day water only fast once a month. And um, I think while there were clearly some benefits of doing that, um, I think, you know, it's very difficult to measure what's happening cellularly, but my belief at least was that the benefits of that outweighed the downside. I found this very powerful because he was a huge proponent of fasting for a long time. It was a little bit of a shocker to a lot of people. And then we have Brad Kearns. I know I didn't mention him earlier on, but Brad Kearns is a pro triathlete that used to do a ton of fasting. He and Mark Sisson were like big in fasting. And he's talked about how it's too stressful. So I'll cut to a short clip here about stress and recovery. Okay. So, so let me just take a moment before this gentleman goes, because he's a major influencer. So think about, think about this, everybody. Imagine you have millions of people who listen to you. And you go out and you promote something around health. Those people will believe what you just shared. And they will then tell other people. And those people will tell other people. And so the domino effect is you have all these people jumping on board of whatever the health recommendation you put out there. And now these people who started this belief with intermittent fasting have recanted, right? They no longer believe what they encouraged. That means a lot of people will never know that they recanted. It's kind of like buying a book. And not realizing that the, the, the person who wrote the book discovered something later and they made a mistake. But if you're not following that person, you wouldn't know that they made a mistake. You would just go by what you believe in the book. That what I'm saying with intermittent fat. That's why I'm always telling people like there's so many people that promote supplements and they promote different things, uh, different ways of eating. And, you know, it's like there's people. Like in network marketing, one day they're promoting one company, let's say Modare, because Modare has a liquid collagen. And then out of nowhere, they're no longer promoting that product. Well, if it was all that, why are you no longer promoting it? Now, I get it because I've endorsed the liquid collagen. And I'm happy that I no longer am out there promoting it. It is a good product. And I can stand by that because it is a good product. I think it's too expensive and there's other ways to get the same thing without paying that kind of money. So I tell people about that because it's a good product, but I can always stand by that. But when people are jumping from one product to another product and endorsing this one week and something else the next week, that's where people are like, man, 
I mean, it's really sad to watch people just follow those people. And I get it. A lot of people do follow people because they're bored. They're lonely. They like the fun and excitement that it comes with, you know, being a part of something that's, that's, that's moving something. But at the end of the day, come on, you guys. Let's not promote things that aren't real. These All of these experts who have big followings, they were promoting intermittent fasting. Now, I'm happy that they're, they're, they've turned around. But, man, think of all the people that they influence to go down a road that now they look at it differently. And let me just say, I've never endorsed and recommended intermittent fasting. And every reason why I didn't stands to this day. And I'll end with that. I'll end with one major point from one of the most respected uh, nutrition scientists in the world when it comes to protein and skeletal muscle. I just happened to be in agreement with them. So that worked out great. Okay. But let's listen in. Here we go. One thing that comes to mind is um, the, the popularity of this uh, restrictive dietary strategies today, fasting, keto, carb restriction, calorie restriction, time restricted feeding, all these things that are um, presented as having health boosting benefits. And of course they, they do validate that, but there's a certain segment of people who have dove into this uh, and kind of form this restrictive mindset in the name of health, but they're putting too much stress into their lifestyle mix again. All these things are possible to go do your CrossFit workout and then come home and fast for three more hours and then have a ketogenic meal and then wake up and do it again. It's possible, but I'm gonna argue that it's not necessarily optimal to add the stress of fasting and keto to a stressful workout. So I've kind of rethought my dietary strategy these days to just fuel myself with as much nutritious food as possible. Dr. Tommy Wood, one of the great leaders that we respect in ancestral health, he told me this many years ago. It took a while to kick in, but he said, for healthy athletic people like you, Brad, I want you eating as much nutritious food as possible every day until you gain a pound of body fat and then you turn it down. And that's when you realize you're optimal, that you're eating so much that you're actually adding body fat from nutritious intake of eggs and steak and liver and smoothies and tons of fruit and all the things that are now the centerpiece of my diet. Now okay, one thing I want you guys to get, okay. Every one of these experts do not know about the diet for your life methodology. They don't. If they did, because I've met with many people who are in the same kind of position, they would be blown away and they would 100 percent endorse it. Same as when I was with Jack LaLanne, he was like, this is the best thing I've seen. When I was with Dick Gregory, this is the best thing I've seen. And when I've been with people in that space, now they don't go out and, and, and promote it because they don't make money from promoting my stuff, right? Or our methodology. Uh, and that's one of the big challenges. So we have to somehow position ourselves to where we are the ones promoting it. Because other people aren't going to promote it because people bring in own their own confirmation bias and people aren't humble. They don't want to promote or give someone you would think, and a lot of you guys don't get this and, and God bless you because you're loving kind people. And you're like, just people should do the right thing. They don't do the right thing. They don't do the right thing. Many celebrities I've coached and work with will hug me and kiss me on the cheek. And at the end of the day, they are not going to promote anything that I do unless they can make money. And I have countless amount of celebrities and pro athletes I've worked with that will not share information that can help people unless they can make money. It's just the way it is. Okay. But a lot of these people just influence people and then they change their mind. I just, I feel sad that most people just don't know what's going on. Okay, so we're almost done, stay with me. Now, when you look at the big picture and you look at this, almost every single person that I've talked to has talked about fasting being problematic because it's hard to get enough protein. So now I wanna address some of the interviews that I've done with some of these same guests that are talking about the importance of protein. And we can kind of connect the dots here that the issue with fasting isn't fasting itself, 
It's the fact that people typically aren't getting protein in. So let's investigate this. Here's Dr. Rhonda Patrick talking about how she's realized how important protein is for longevity. Why I've changed my mind, I, on, I used to often skip breakfast myself. And um, I think as new data has come out and as I've talked to a lot of experts on muscle protein synthesis and like Stu Phillips, for example, Brad Schoenfeld, I have, I've come to this, this um, conclusion that, you know, not getting enough protein in that really important meal after you've been fasting all night, you know, we don't store amino acids. We don't store them like we do. We store glycogen for glucose. You know, we store fat in, you know, you know, adipose tissue, triglycerides. We don't store amino acids. We need a constant source of it. And we, when we don't get amino acids, um, we start to experience muscle breakdown. And so it's always a balance between muscle protein synthesis and breakdown, right? And there's two signals for muscle protein synthesis. Protein intake specifically has to do with essential amino acids like leucine being a major one. That, that signal muscle protein synthesis. And then the other signal is mechanical stress, right? So just resistance training essentially, right? The, the forces like mechanically like stressing your muscles, right? Um, so that first meal breakfast is so important because you're essentially at the point where you you need protein. And so you get into this sort of catabolic, um, you know, state if you're not getting protein at that point. Okay. Now I'm going to show one more clip, you guys. What Dr. Patrick just shared, if you got what she shared and you see people promoting intermittent fasting, that is your clear, your clear signal that they are uninformed, they are ignorant, and they are leading people who don't know any better to do intermittent fasting. When the top experts and what you just heard her say, because I'm watching some people who are part of some network marketing companies and they'll say, hey, we're going to do intermittent fasting. Join it. I'm down 20 pounds. I'm down five pounds. And a bunch of suckers. And I say that because I get pissed off. But a lot of ignorant people who don't know any better will be like, oh, I'm going to do that. And they just pull you right in. And the next thing you know, you're doing intermittent fasting. And a year, two years from now, you'll be sitting there. You ain't done nothing. I mean, I have people who are my clients that I was being successful with. They stopped working with me, got caught up in the whole supplement push. And they're still battling. And I watch them lie on Facebook and LinkedIn, how they're losing weight and how it's all the sell a product. And people are so gullible, they have no idea. So anyone who tells you and promotes intermittent fasting, I don't care what they say. They may say, I have data. It's worked for me for 10 years. They are a liar. And okay, maybe it has worked for them. Maybe they're not lying about that but they are a liar because they're omitting they're omitting information that you need to know about that you if someone omits something that means that they and and if they're unaware of what they're omitting then they should stop doing what they're doing because they're doing an injustice to people intermittent fasting is not ideal now, if you're in your 20s and your 30s, and you guys have heard me say this forever, you could probably get away with it, no problem. But after 40, especially 50 plus, you cannot afford to lose skeletal muscle. That will impact your health. That will impact how you look, how you age. That will impact your vulnerability when it comes to being diagnosed with cancer and other health conditions. I don't want you to take my word for it. I'm going to bring in the man, Mr. Don Lehman. Don Lehman, one of the most respected nutrition scientists living today. And when he's no longer here, because he's in the 70s, when that day comes, his work will live on because of what he's done over the last 40 plus years. I want you to hear what he has to say when it comes to intermittent fasting. Okay. And this is a good one to have. And for my coaches who catch this, you know, I, I'm going to make this clip available. You should have it on your phone when you meet people.
who who don't understand the importance of breakfast and making sure you get an adequate amount of protein for breakfast, especially as you're maturing in life, like over the age of 40. Okay, this is Dr. Don Lehman. I'm going to play it twice. Some studies, actually quite a few studies, looking at weight loss. So you're talking about time-restricted feeding or fasting, etc. I don't recommend fasting for anybody over 30 ever. So, you know, 36, 48, 72-hour fasting, some people think that's somehow a cleanse. I think that is a muscle loss that is never recoverable in an older adult. So, you know, a 25-year-old can pull that off, but a 65-year-old should never do that. Did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? Because I want you to have heard it. You can look up Don Lehman. Uh, over, I think he has over 100, I know he has over 100 peer-reviewed published studies. The most important meal, if Don was on this call right now, of the day would be breakfast. If you're eating breakfast, you're not doing intermittent fasting for most situations. And I've watched him, people, a lot of the intermittent fasting people won't highlight him or have them on, on their, their social media because it contradicts what they're selling. But a lot of these people who are selling intermittent fasting are no longer selling intermittent fasting because they finally woke up. And now they're in alignment with Don and they're in alignment with me. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who know me well, you're ahead of the game. I'm telling you. It's funny. I watch people. I watch like local people where I live in Ventura, California, as well as Boca Raton, Florida. And I watch them go on and they start talking about this and that and intermittent fasting. I just go, they are so ignorant. And I'm not being mean. They're just ignorant. They don't know. The part that pisses me off is that they're promoting it and people and they are they're influencers. And they have people who are listening to them. And then you have people who have done intermittent fasting and lost weight. And because they have a personal experience of losing weight with intermittent fasting, that becomes all their confidence. And they're like, well, I know it worked for me. And they don't understand the implications of what they're doing because, okay, let's say it worked for you and you're 33 years old. Now your mom sees you do well and she's, let's say, 67. She decides to do intermittent fasting because of your ignorance. She feels like she's doing well. She's losing weight. But the majority of the weight loss is coming from her skeletal muscle. But she doesn't know because she's not tracking her body composition. As an influencer, you don't know, and you're out there bragging to people that I helped out my, my mom because you're only looking at the weight on the scale. But what you don't know is that you just caused your mom to lose a lot of skeletal muscle and you just compromise the rest of her life when it comes to her health, what she's going to look like, how she's going to feel how she's going to battle and deal with cancer, God forbid, if it happens. You compromised your own mom's health because you were ignorant and you were pushing intermittent fasting. Not aware that intermittent fasting is not something you want people over 40 to do. Think about what I just said. And this, this is not my opinion. I didn't wake up and go, oh, I'm going to share my opinion today and this is how I'm thinking. No, this is what I've been living. This is what I've been doing. And this is what I'm aware of. And there's hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of citations to support everything that I'm just now sharing with you. And you got people at work saying, oh, yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You got celebrities saying, yeah, I do intermittent fasting. And there's no repercussion. There's no consequence for these people who are influencing people to do something because they're ignorant. It's kind of like I, I did a post earlier today about milk. 
and most people don't know this, but if you look at the milk movement, when they used to do the milk mustache, I don't even know if they still do them now, but the majority of the people in the ads were African-American. And so I published on my Facebook page today, as I'm sharing this with you, a uh, celebrity, I'm not even going to mention her name right now. And it's a black woman. She's got the milk around her lips. And I bet she doesn't know that 70%, over 70% of black folks are lactose intolerant. And many of those black folks have stomach issues, gastrointestinal issues, and they don't know they're lactose intolerant. But the industry is like, hey, we're going to pay this sister, this professional athlete some money. Let's get a little milk mustache going on. And let's take about a third or two thirds or three thirds, actually three quarters of the black population who does not benefit from consuming milk. And let's get them to drink it. And the ones that can't drink and they feel like it's bothering them, they feel bad about themselves. Do you think these black celebrities are aware of that? No, I don't think most of them are aware of it because they're ignorant and they're blinded, right? So you get a nice check. And all you got to do is go do a photo shoot and let them put a milk mustache on you. You know, it's kind of like when Michael Jackson did the commercial for Pepsi. It was one of the biggest, you know, commercials ever when he did that. Biggest paydays ever. And we know that my, Michael Jackson never even drank Pepsi. And I love Michael Jackson. But he ain't never drank Pepsi. And those were his words but he did a Pepsi commercial. It's called a check. It's called getting paid, everybody. It's called getting paid. Now, is there a way to get paid and endorse a good product? Absolutely. I'm endorsing a product right now. And I expect to help a lot of people. And as a result of that, God bless, I'm going to make a whole bunch of money in the next five, 10 years. Helping people with something that's legit that I can go to sleep at night and go, yep, I'm happy I did that. There's not a lot of products out there. There's a whole bunch of people just trying to, they're trying to survive. I get it. They're trying to like have a side gig, make a little money. Hey, I get it. I get it. I get it. We got to survive. But I also get that it feels pretty good when you're doing something right. And these experts I just share with you, I give them my utmost respect because they publicly put it out there to do intermittent fasting. And now they're publicly putting it out there and saying, nah, I wouldn't do intermittent fasting. So let's look, listen to the man, the man that a lot of these people like go to. Again, he's peer reviewed. Listen to what he says about fasting. Like really hear what he's saying. Okay. This is Dr. Dr. Don Lehman. I want you to really hear what he's saying because it's short, it's sweet, but it's, I mean, he's saying so much in this short clip. Here it is. Studies, actually quite a few studies looking at weight loss. So you're talking about time-restricted feeding or fasting, et cetera. I don't recommend fasting for anybody over 30 ever. So, you know, 36, 48, 72 hour fasting. Some people think that's somehow a cleanse. I think that is a muscle loss that is never recoverable in an older adult. So, you know, a 25-year-old. Okay, I'm going to rewind that. He said there's a muscle loss, and, and I'm paraphrasing, that is practically unrecoverable, meaning when you lose that muscle and you're 55 years old, you ain't getting it back. So then you got to go, okay, well, what's the problem with that, Robert? Well, if you get cancer, you're more likely to not make it. Your metabolism slows, you burn less calories. You're more inclined to have a heart attack, 300% uh, actually, more likely to have a heart attack compared to someone who didn't lose that much muscle. And the list goes on and on. But your doctor ain't sharing that because they don't know that. And I can back off. Everything I'm saying, I can back it up 100%. But just hear what he just said it. This is the man. So he's not going to have his daughter or his wife do intermittent fasting. He knows better. That would be suicide. Why would I do that to my loved one, someone who I care about and love? I know I wouldn't. 
Okay, let me let him finish. Here we go. How a cleanse, I think that is a muscle loss that is never recoverable in an older adult. So, you know, a 25-year-old can pull that off, but a 65-year-old should never do that. He's saying what I've been saying for a long time. Help me out. Now, Tasha asked a good question. Let me see if I can address this. She says, why so much focus on the fasting? A lot of people are talking about it. What is a short-term benefit? Okay. So I'm going to say this. And if Tasha, if you're still there, I would love your thoughts. Ask me another question or anyone else, Susie, Sandy, who can help out. When I ask myself, why do people do fasting? Well, I know about political reasons, which totally makes sense. I get religious reasons. Totally makes sense. But the people who are doing it to lose weight, or they say is part of how they, they are getting healthier, I call that ignorance. Because when you do it to lose weight, what you're looking for is structure. And you need some type of structure to help bring down your overall consumption of energy. We can call it calories. So you're eating less. And so you give yourself a window of eating, and then you have a window of restriction where you don't eat. And that will probably help a lot of people because if you don't know how to eat, hear me on this, Tasha, if you don't know how to eat, which is what, as a coach, I teach people, I'm teaching people how to eat, how to make fat-burning meals. If you don't know how to eat, then if you give yourself an eight-hour period, for instance, on when to eat, then you're probably going to eat less inside of a 24-hour period, which means you'll probably lose weight. But why would you do that when, you, when you're aware that you could learn how to eat? So the people who do intermittent fasting, they don't know how to eat. They don't have that kind of structure. So it, it, it works, and I get why they fall into it. But anyone who does intermittent fasting, and if I sit down with them and they're open-minded, because a lot of these people are not open-minded, and they let me show them the Diet Free Life methodology, every time I've been able to do that, they no longer do intermittent fasting. They want to learn the Diet Free Life methodology because it then it makes sense. But if they don't know what we know, then of course they're going to give a whole bunch of credence to intermittent fasting. They don't know what they don't know. And we don't live in a world like the intermittent fasting people who are popular on online. They're not going to have a conversation with me. I've asked them, but they won't have a conversation with me because unless they're humble, they're going to feel stupid. And a lot of people aren't humble. A lot of your influence, they're not humble. A lot of doctors I talk to all the time, they're not humble. They don't want to learn. I mean, recently, in, 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 in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be in Chicago meeting with a, a, a doctor who I showed him the methodology. And he was like, hey, how can I become a coach? He saw it clearly because he's humble. A lot of these people are not humble. They don't want to put themselves in a position where they they learn from other people. They want to be the end all be all. They think they're the shit. And that's where they work from. And that's why they don't know it. And intermittent fasting is kind of like free source. It's like it's, anybody can do that. And then you just look for people who agree with you. And then everybody does their different thing with intermittent fasting. I'm telling you, man, a lack of humility is blocking a lot of people. A lot of people. So let's see, what is Susie saying? Susie says they just don't know what to eat, and this structure seems to work for them. Yeah. If you don't know what to eat, then that, that works. Like, okay, look, and I'm about to, I, I, I'm going to close you guys, but hear, hear this, especially coaches or anyone who wants a deeper understanding of nutrition, better health, et cetera. Structure is what people are looking for. You know how like when someone does a diet, 
what they're looking for is structure, right? They're looking for rules. They're looking for guidelines. And I get that because in psychology, we know that structure helps, right? So if a, if a parent wants to be a better parent, I mean, our parents didn't teach us how to be a parent. So, so where do you get the structure? Where do you get the guidelines? Where do you get, where do you get the coaching to be a better parent, right? If you get married to someone who, who trained you on how to be amazing as a spouse, even if you go on a date, like who, who's trained us? Where do we, where's the structure? Where do we get it? Most of us never even think about this. That's when the job, it, it, it helps, right? When you become an entrepreneur, a lot of people who are entrepreneurs are freaking out because they don't know what to do every day. They don't know, like they, they got too much wiggle room. But if they have a mentor and they put themselves in a position where it's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do every day. I don't have a job, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a job because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to give myself structure because it's the structure that is going to set you up for the success. Amen. Amen. Can, can, can I get amen out there? All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this was good. All right, you guys. Well, it's time to get back to work. Plus, I got my two daughters here. They're quiet right now. Let me do this live. And they're giving me this space. But I know they're ready to go. So I got to put my, uh, I got to give them structure. It's time to put my Uber hat back on. Because we got places to go, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to play Dr. Layman one more time and then my music and then we're out of here. All right, you guys, if you came in late, watch it from the beginning because there was a lot of good information that we shared. Again, uh, the whole focus of this episode was to share with you a bunch of people who were totally pro intermittent fasting. And now they have flip flops. But I respect them. And I love that they're open about it because they've learned. They see things differently. The good news is that I've never flip-flopped on intermittent fasting. I'm saying the same thing because I'm looking at the science. And we're clinically proven. So I already know. Why would I, why would I recommend intermittent fasting when we've proven through our methodology, through randomized or controlled trials, we already know. I don't need to do intermittent fasting. I was talking to a lady earlier today, and she was saying, well, intermittent fasting works for me. And, you know, if you do some work in Florida, we should, you know, I'm like, what? Do you understand that we're not? And so I'm talking to a lot of ignorant people. They don't understand what it clinically proven means. And these are some influence. They just don't, they don't get it. So it's hard. It's hard to be patient. Let me tell you, it really is. Here we go. Some studies, actually quite a few studies looking at weight loss. So you're talking about time-restricted feeding or fasting, et cetera. I don't recommend fasting for anybody over 30 ever. So, you know, 36, 48, 72 hour fasting. Some people think that's somehow a cleanse. I think that is a muscle loss that is never recoverable in an older adult. So, you know, a, a 25 year old can pull that off but a 65-year-old should never do that.